prominent black leaders such as A. Philip Randolph, Ella Baker, Martin Luther King, and many others were willing to look beyond Rustin's baggage because they appreciated his unique assets. Although still a teenager when I attended the March on Washington and became aware of Rustin's significance as a behind-the-scenes organizer, he soon attracted my curiosity once I became a part-time journalist for the Los Angeles Free Press and ultimately a full-time graduate student at UCLA. When I began the research that ultimately resulted in my dissertation about the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, I realized that I needed to know more about the man who seemed always on the periphery of my main topic. I would discover that Rustin had been invited to address SNCC's first conference in October 1960, but the invitation was withdrawn when a union sponsoring the conference objected to Rustin's radical reputation. SNCC members would soon regret giving in to anti-communist hysteria, but some would later deride Rustin as an ally of the liberal establishment that opposed seating the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, MFDP, delegation to the 1964 Democratic Party Convention in place of the all-white regular delegation from Mississippi. Stokely Carmichael, with whom I became acquainted shortly before the March on Washington, would later tell me about his effort as a Howard University student to arrange a debate between Rustin and Malcolm X. He recalled being impressed by both men, although Rustin strongly criticized Stokely's adoption of the Black Power slogan, dismissing it as positively harmful because it would remove black Americans from the main area of political struggle, 